Hey guys, it's Hunt for Games. And to distract myself from the fact that bats are probably using my green screen back at the apartment to take glamour shots of themselves at this very moment, I'm starting a new Final Fantasy XI video series. This time I'm going to go through all my favorite Notorious Monsters from 1 through 75, hitting all the top ones, all my favorites, all the ones that I wish I'd gotten to kill. Let me know in the comments which Notorious Monsters you really want to see, because some of these guys can be a real pain in the ass, I'm not even sure we're going to be able to get them all to pop. But levels 1 to 10, let's get into it. Probably the most famous on this list, the Jumping Gecko himself, is also the one I probably fought the most during my Final Fantasy XI career. No joke, he's refused to relinquish his prize to me countless times, I, it's like 15 or 20 or something stupid like that. And I love to retell the story, I think I actually told in one of my other videos, of the fateful Christmas Eve where I killed him 9 straight times in a row with no drop. But we'll get back to him in a little bit. Instead, I first want to bring up the Lonely Crawler in Eastern Saruta Baruta. This very well may have been one of the first notorious monsters I ever came across, because I started in Winders, which was awesome by the way. He's just in this little offshoot in the top of the zone, like you'd never run into him unless you were off the beaten path already like looking for him. This legendary crawler of mild difficulty to early players was none other than Spiny Spipipi? Spiny Spipipi. Spipipi. His claim to fame was the Miss Silk Cape, which would always sell kind of decently, but it wasn't going to make you rich overnight. It was a neat little cape though, as it was the only cape with any kind of mind enhancement to like level 32. Not that one mind is going to change your life as a red mage, black mage, or white mage, but oh my gosh, if you were one of those three and you were heading to the dunes, you wanted to have every little bit of help you could get. I'm glad I could take this guy down one last time, although I literally have nothing left that could benefit from this cape. Everything's higher than level 32 at this point, most of them are like 49 to 99. Next, we have the notorious monster that I only know from legend. Whispers spread across Vanadil because I've never actually seen it. The infamous Jaggedy Ear Jack. Seriously, if you've seen this thing, you're like a god. Now, unlike the Miss Silk Cape, this guy actually could make you rich overnight if you could ever get the drop or his camp to spawn and not get it stolen from you. I mean, none of those things would happen. This guy was camped 24 7. He dropped the Rabbit Charm, which was a decent piece of gear for a thief at level 7 one dex, one agility, and one steel. The one dex and one agility would be replaced by the spike necklace in like just a few levels. Nobody cared about that, but that plus one steel? While no longer even remotely interesting, plus steel gear used to be kind of rare, and at level 7, there was nothing. Steel used to be far more useful than it is today. I mean, I used to steal beastman coins, uh, random treasures from all sorts of mobs. You had to do it to get the thief's testimony at level 70 to fight Matt. Because of all that, this necklace would sell for like a crap load of money. But that was also due to the fact that it had like a 1% drop rate. It never drops. Nobody had one. Seriously, this piece of gear was more of a joke about how Thief was so screwed gear-wise than it was actually useful. Sorry we couldn't get any footage of this one. I literally was camping him for like an hour and a half the other day just trying to get him to spawn and he just won't. I've camped him countless times over the years, each time a no-show. I'm actually starting to think he's not even real. Alright, for the last two we're going to head off to South Gustaberg, which let's face it, had some of the best notorious monsters in the early Final Fantasy XI. Bubbly Bernie was for a quest, but everybody remembers him. Hell, he even has like a little cameo in Final Fantasy XIV, it's one of those fates. But on a more useful note, there was Stinging Sophie. Remember that bee? It dropped a bee stinger, which was the weirdest dagger ever. The Hornet Eagle's younger brother, uh, this dagger was far more useful for random weird things like skill ups and red mages trying to do just end spell damage on notorious monsters so they wouldn't feed it TP. I mean, it had such low damage that there was actually a strategy involving doing zero damage with this dagger. But it had 150 delay, which is crazy fast, even for dagger. For Thief, it was like a fun offhand, but generally considered not to be worth it. Rangers would use it sometimes because it had the agility boost, but they'd probably trade it out for something else later anyway. Regardless, it sold often, but for practically nothing. I mean, Singing Sophie is reported to have respawned like 5 minutes after it was last killed, which makes it almost possible that it was its own placeholder. Is that... Is that a thing? I don't think that's a thing, but that'd be funny, hilarious. I've heard it go up to even as high as like 6 hours though, so... Eh. Regardless, she was around fairly often, and the dagger had like a 33% drop rate, so it wasn't that expensive. Everyone had one. Unlike the dagger though, our final contender was a little more stingy with his prize. At a mere 6.6% drop rate, even after the change to make it a rare exclusive drop for these damn boots, I still couldn't get him. Having killed this asshole something like 15 times even after the alteration with no drop, I mean he was, he was well camped after the change. Those boots were just so useful for so many jobs. Accuracy used to be king in this game for so long, and three decks and agility, regardless of whether or not they directly affected your job, was just incredible. And if you're like a thief or a ranger, oh my god, you wanted them so bad. Because let's face it, boots are like one of the hardest pieces of gear in the game to get good stats for. Nothing ever comes with any stats. <laughs> Leaping Lizzie is pretty much well known by almost anybody who's ever played this game. Even if you quit after a week, you probably heard of Leaping Lizzie. Hell, you probably quit because of Leaping Lizzie. 
I now associate his likeness with Christmas Eve, where I killed him nine straight times in a row with no competition without drop. Oh my god, why? I've gotten like 1% drop rate items on the first kill, but this guy just won't give me the boots. So for probably the last time, I camped him. Somebody even ran by while I was doing it, just to make me a little nervous that I would actually have to fight to claim this guy. But that's that's the whole Final Fantasy XI Notorious Monster Camping experience. I didn't even remember the placeholder trick anymore, but there was no need. I was going to kill every single last rock lizard until this guy popped. And for a while, it looked like he was going to refuse. I was killing him for like an hour, an hour, 15 minutes. Nothing, no show. It just wasn't happening. I was getting ready to call a day. I was so tired. But then there he was. Showed up on wide scan. Despite the fact that I was probably the only person even in South Gustenburg, and definitely the only person in that like little corner, I was momentarily terrified. You can't quite get over that little thrill of the Notorious Monster pop where you're like, I gotta get to him, I gotta claim! I just got a little nervous by the time I get up there, somebody else would suddenly have showed up and grabbed him. How many times has that happened where you're just sitting there and you're like, oh, nothing's going on, stolen. But I got up there, he wasn't claimed. As I saw his fat ass just sitting there, I, I couldn't do it. How many times has this idiot been ganked over the course of the Final Fantasy XI runtime? Within a few days of release, probably that day, he was getting crushed, just destroyed within seconds of popping. He would endlessly pop, wait a mere few seconds, get killed, and then go to wherever it is that Notorious Monsters go to wait to repop. I, I don't know what, I can't really imagine what kind of hell that must be. So I sat with him, shared endless stories of, of our battles together over the years, all the times I killed him. The one time he killed me when I claimed him as like, a level 8 something I was leveling, walk side by side with my old nemesis sharing a rare quiet moment in this game of frenetic claims and destruction. And then I stabbed him in the f***ing face. Holy sh... Oh my god, I finally got him. I literally cannot believe this. It sounds so stupid, but I've waited so long. I've got to go level like Ranger or something now, just to make use of the boots. <laughs> Regardless, like the video if you liked it, and please leave in the comments all the uh, notorious monsters that you're excited to see, and your favorite stories of camps, or losing camps, or whatever happened from levels 1 to 10. Subscribe if you're new. I'm going to take this video series at least all the way up to 75 for all the most fun notorious monsters. And I really hope to see you guys back. Uh, don't forget to check out my other Final Fantasy XI videos if you haven't already, and <laughs> thanks for watching.